All right, folks, are you serious? We're so glad to have back Stan Dale. It's been a while since we've been able to uh, have time, actually, and, and to get our system done here. We've got our studio working great. And uh, Stan, great to have you here again today. Good to be here. Uh, I know that you've got a really new studio. That's great. I wish I had one like that. Uh, this is kind of very portable here. No, yours looks great. Your, your, your camera is working beautiful. You've got a great background and sounds good. We're happy. All work. right. Well, it's, yeah, technology, it's, it's neat when it works, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Stan, uh, of course, you're with EMP Shield. As, uh, and uh, Oh. Wait. Yeah. Is my um, camera... What happened? You're freezing up, Stan? Oh, yeah, so are you. I hear you now. Sometimes you must be freezing occasionally. What I'm trying to figure out here is if I need to change the uh, uh, the resolution of the camera down a bit. Um, and do you think I can get the camera to come up now? Let me. Anyway. All right. That's OK. 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 We'll just uh, go with what we got. We go with it. So anyway, Stan, uh, EMPShield.com, folks. That's www.EMPShield.com. And the reason his company is so important and during these days that we're living in, of course, in the prophetic time we're in is because the sun is so volatile and seems to be getting worse uh, that we, you know, we, we remember the Carrington event that fried the power grids, but now there's so much radiation and there's so much activity from the sun that the concern is, even if we don't have a Carrington event that can fry the, the uh, electric grids, the components, your appliances, the components in your home or in your car can be affected by the volatility of these CMEs and solar flares. Stan, is that correct? Is that, can that happen? Oh yeah, uh, the, there are a number of things happening on the sun now that are uh, fairly rare and uh, they're becoming more frequent all of a sudden in this solar cycle. Uh, NASA's and NOAA's attempt to forecast this cycle uh, missed because it's now double what they predicted for this solar cycle. It's been doubles almost from the start, double sunspot numbers. And then we're having increased uh, magnetic field crossover, which is lines that cross across the solar equator from the north to the south. And it start, it, it makes the magnetic fields kind of crunch down on the surface of the sun on one side where these magnetic lines are joining the north to the south. On the other side, it's stretching the surface of the sun like that, which is opening holes and letting stuff come through that normally wouldn't do it. Um, if you can look at my... Um, uh, show images page. Uh, All right, let's go to his page, Brock, and then uh, let's see what he has here. To, we're going to show some stuff here. Images page. And, okay. Slide 43. Whoa, right there, slide 43. You just passed it. Just passed up. it. Go up. There you go. There. Okay. Now that that's showing you that that uh, the, the predicted values for right now uh, were forty five point six sunspot count. All right, and it's really what not. Does that, what does that mean? Forty five point six. Well, well, they count sunspots, right? A spot can be, you know, size of a quarter. It can be the size of a football field or whatever. And yeah. so, so this tells you the the number of spots, but you really need the area of it and the magnetic field variations of it. Okay. Um, so yeah, now go back to the go back to the show images page there, and uh, let's see if we've got any. We don't have any of the magnetic field lines on this image, but anyway, um, the they are warning us. Uh, you know, this I put this out for Tuesday, but they are warning us that we're going to layers uh, from the backside of the sun now moving into position in the next three days, actually next two days, to be aimed right at us, and. Uh, wow that's that's when you get this uh, extreme EMP pulse. Y you can get a coronal mass ejection. And I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to see several of these uh, in this solar cycle up to about the year 2025, maybe 2026 as well. It's going to be a very hot cycle. Now, on my show images page, uh, Brock, there, Brock, look at slide 41. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we're, we're looking at the backside of the sun a bit. Just click on that green picture there in slide 41. And uh, what you'll see in this slide is about two thirds of the surface of the sun. And uh, you see these bright white uh, spots. Yeah. Uh, 
the spots are moving uh, in the shot here from left to right. And when it's at zero longitude, right in the middle of the screen there, that's when these these white uh, uh, active regions are pointed right at us or sometimes uh, a coronal hole. Now, from the we can't get all of the backside of the sun because that uh, satellite failed several years ago and we can't get that image. But we do get portions on the left here, just around the horizon of the sun and those on the right where they've just gone around the sun. And this is showing us two hot regions were yep. coming at us on the 8th, which is three days ago. Yep. Um, I haven't got the current one up here on this site. but um, So you're saying um, those two real yeah. bright ones yeah. over on the left side are actually working their way, and they're almost to the center, Earth-facing. Yeah. 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 Pretty interesting ones, but the ones that are bigger are on the left. They're just on the edge, and yep. they should just about be where those – those two white uh, groupings are now that are close to the center at minus okay. 30, minus 40. I'm going to try something here while I'm talking to you. There's a, a way that uh, I might be able to send you a link to, to Brock in the um, uh, the chat channel. Can I do that, Brock, or, or not? Yeah. Okay, so if I do that, we can actually see what the current thing for that is. Uh, and you can follow along here. Let's go there. And and I'm going to send you this link so that we can. Yeah, here we go. All right. And this goes to Brock. Is he typing it in the chat room or is he where is he typing it at? Chat room. Yeah. Should pop up then, Brock, any second. You got it now? It hasn't popped up yet. Ah, uh, is it that slow? Well, I, I don't know. Um, Saddle Ridge, not you. Mm, no, it says private chat. Do I need to go to somewhere else or what? Oh, yeah, just you, can you see our chat room on the right on the right hand from your screen or no? Chat chat with everyone in the studio, not to, yeah. well, yeah, I did, yeah, I put it with everyone in the studio. Okay, if you type it right down there where it says stand, uh, down there where it says, Brock's got stand, watch your, right down there. You type right in that little box. Yeah, I did, and I hit the arrow, and it's gone, and it shows it's posted as, as a oh. private chat. Oh, but Doesn't it's a it? private chat. You'd have to go to YouTube, okay. All right. Uh, no, not going to work? No. Nope. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that's sad. Okay. Well, we tried. You have a, if you have a website that if we went to, he, you could show him something? Uh, yeah. Um, just, uh, uh, hmm. can I share a screen with you at all? Is that allowed in the system? I don't know if it is. Is it, Brock? Yeah, I don't think so. Well, well. Now, what I could do is I could you can uh, change your own screen. Yeah, if you if you put it up on your screen in front of you, you then yeah, uh, we can see you right now. But you can't see that because I can't go into background with that with a live image. So just a second here, um, stream link. Okay, uh, I'm going to send you an email that link. It's coming now. See if okay. you can get it. See if you can get an email. Send it to Paul Megan. You sent it to mine. Pass it yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, Brock. Was that it? You're on my email, Brock, already. See it? Yeah. Did you go? That's the wrong so, email. Uh, go back to my go, Brock. Go back to my go back to my email inbox. My email inbox. You're, in, you're you're getting the Heidi's. Go to my email. Hit M. No, no. Okay. Hit the inbox. Just hit the inbox because he just sent it. There it is. You got it now. Uh, is it called introducing our? No. It says stream really link for show access. So right. I didn't. There it is. That's it. Here. Yeah. Well, good. Okay. Now try that link. Pull it up on your screen. Put it on the screen, Brock, for him so he can see it. This is something your your listeners should look at. 
you know, they can look at it during the week every day to see these things that I'm talking okay. about. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great stuff. Okay. Now, this is the Solar Dynamic Observatory that uh, NASA runs. Okay. And um, if you'll see there where it says um, at, at the very, you're looking at it now, that kind of brownish looking image, it says A1A. Yep. Right there. Click on that. Click on data links. Okay. Data links. Yeah. And uh, data links and select um, 512 PFSS down at the bottom. Okay. Okay. Ugh. Where did that come from? Uh, that's a pretty big, gra that's a pretty nice graphic right there. Yeah. You can get bigger. Uh, in fact, I guess you, you can make go it to bigger, the Brock. Make it bigger. Yeah, go to go to the one that's uh, 1024. I didn't want to overload your system, but there you go. Now, what you're seeing here, these white uh, fuzzy lines are magnetic field lines. And normally, they're like in the northern hemisphere of the sun, the sunspots, um, they have a north and south to them. And they, they kind of are horizontal to the spin of the sun. And let's say north-south in the top, but the sunspot groupings down at the bottom are south-north, exactly reversed. And those mag north and south magnetic polarities, wherever they are on the sun. And so what I'm talking about is those that cross across the equator are squeezing the surface of the sun, which is flimsy and, and, and thinning at the moment. And so on the opposite side of the sun, it's causing a stretching in the opposite direction. And this is this is not a, a good and stable thing, in my opinion. Now, wow. Now let's go back to to the, uh, the images, yeah, data links. No, just go back on this one here. Go back one, one screen. Back one, go back one. Quit that image. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Now click on that uh, data links there for that brown one where we just were. Quick, click okay. on that and go all the way down to the bottom where it says forty eight hour video. Okay. And click on that, and that will bring up an animation showing you the last two days and nights. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Now, you, it doesn't normally, I don't know why, uh, they've been having trouble with it for the last week, but you'll see ribbons that go from the left to the right down toward the equator, kind of brown ribbons, and these are ridges. Uh, and you'll see the dark spots, which are, are holes in the corona, which can yeah. emit stuff that uh, radiation and frequencies that uh, are offensive to our satellite communications and shortwave radio. Okay. Now hit the back arrow button on that and then scroll all the way, uh, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and you'll see the little uh, way down. Keep going, keep going. Uh, okay, there you are. There's the green one. Yep. Now I, yep. I enhance mine a bit, you know, so that, uh, the contrast, yep. so you can see it better, but it shows you here that that white spot I showed you for two days ago is now directly pointed at us. They're kind of weak compared to what's coming. But if you look at this every day or on the left side, you'll see what's coming within the next week, spinning around toward us. And the, yeah. area, and the brighter the white is, that's an area you got to watch for, you know, coronal mass ejections, EMP pulses, all kinds of junk uh, and uh, solar flares. And that's what's coming. What is aimed at you right now is, will be at the zero uh, longitude and it will be, you know, plus and minus about 30 of that. How many days does that take for that to get to, uh, because today is the 12th, so how many days? Is that, is that two or three days? Which one are you talking about? The one on the uh, very left? Those two big, those two big wet white spots. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna make their way to the center. Yeah, you can estimate. Let's see, that's one-fourth of the day. You estimate about uh, six to seven days. Okay, so close to a see, week the, from the now. sun. Yeah, the sun actually spins at different rates at the equator uh, and versus the poles. So the average is about 27 days, but some parts of it go at 32 uh, um, you know, days really? or, or slower. Yeah. So, it's yeah, it, it's a fluid. It's a fluid motion. But, yeah. So, all right. Now, okay, let's uh, let's um, go back to that page where you just were. Page. Yeah. Let me close that one there. Okay. And scroll up. Yeah, scroll up. I'm just looking for the one I want you to see. Yeah, the top red one, very, very top right red one. It's uh, 304 angstroms. There you right go. There. Yeah, click on the data links. And at the 1024, oh, sorry, at the 48-hour video on that, 48-hour video on that. 
Okay. Now this is in the hydrogen uh, uh, frequency, so that we can. We, you'll, yeah. Okay. Yours is a faster internet. Than mine. I'll look at yours. Uh, this just shows you uh, uh, what's happening on the sun in a different wavelength. It's like, you know, a filter that lets you see what you couldn't see over on the brown we were looking at a while ago. Um, and there's just been so much activity on this that, you know, I expect you know, just momentarily every day to see something bright coming our way. This is hot. So oh, I see, I see solar flares literally yeah. on the, on the edges of the sun shooting out everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. See, Those this is different. Yeah, and those they, are enormous, actually, aren't they? Way down to let's say at the bottom. Yeah, they're the big, but uh, in the last uh, ten days or so, I've seen things that were like, like mm, five times further from the sun than than the biggest one you can see there. I mean, they they reached out millions of miles. Wow, big, and they were on the left side, so they they didn't quite point at us, and they missed us. Right, but that was what I was warning about on my my website. There, it was. Uh, yeah, you know. That's amazing. So, so do you see there, Brock, that activity? Imagine if the sun was completely Earth facing and you had one of those major explosions. That's what brings sends CMEs our way. These solar flares that could actually do some serious damage, either in the satellites in the sky, our power grids, or if neither one of those, it could just directly affect our components in our home and in our car. Right, Stan? Are you there? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, you blipped out for a while there. If okay. It, if, if it, yeah, if it's earth facing and it yeah. comes straight in, even if it don't fry the power grid or or something, it could still fry or it could really mess up our components in our home. Is that correct? Um. Well, yeah. you really need an EM, EMP pulse to do that. Uh, a, a strong pulse like that, uh, you, you'll see it coming. I mean, well, most of it anyway. The the stuff that travels the speed of light will be here before you know it. But uh, the um, look in your in your email, Brock, uh, in the one you were looking at a while ago, I sent you another one, uh, a, a link to the movie theater, and I'm going to show you something here. That's it. When you get to All the right. Soho movie theater, okay, see where it says resolution? Drop down menu, go to 24, 1024, drop down menu, you're right. And in the dates, Put um, you first. You'll click on what is today? Uh, eleven. Okay, uh, click on nine and then click on eleven. Nine and eleven, and say generate. Did you hit generate? Okay, looks like it's doing it. Yeah, these okay. are things that, that I do every day. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, checking stuff. Pretty now, awesome. Now what? Well, now what you've got there at the moment is a lot faster than mine. I guess my bandwidth's being sucked up, but. Uh, uh, move, move that screen up a bit so I can see where your controls are. Oops. You should have a thing that says, you know, go arrow. Go the other way. Go the other way down. Right. Now, hit play. Now, yeah, hit play. And that's the last uh, two and a half days watching the flares come off of the edge of the sun. And wow. the, white the white circle is the sun's surface. And right. so we have to have that shield so that the telescope can pick this up. Um, this is not as bad as I've seen it last week. There's still that one stuff, on the top. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you've seen a lot bigger, of course, in the past. Yeah. Um, if I can remember what day I can have you pull it up on yours. Let me just check on mine here. In this segment, we've got here the 10th and that top left one. Oh, yeah. What's coming around is not active enough to be impressive yet. So that's huge right there. Is that, that happened on the today, actually? It looks like all right. Now let's, let's go back. Uh, uh, Brock, if you go back up to the map up at the top where you can choose the dates. Yeah. Oh, right yeah. there, right there. Uh, choose uh, August 1 through August. Sorry, can't hear you. August 1 through. August 8th. Hey. Yeah. Sorry. Is that better? Yep. Okay. Okay. And then generate. It's you should on. get about uh, 800 images in there, which is a, be a, a nice. But it's movie a nice about. film. It's a nice movie. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's about a, a, yeah, a week worth. Eight. Eight. Play. Say again. Yeah. This is seven days worth, isn't it? Yep. Wow. 
Okay. Okay. Now play that one. Yeah. Okay. You're doing it. Yep. Okay. It gets real Just big. Keep watching. It tells you on the third. Now there's oh, yeah. a, there, the, third. Wow. the fifth is huge. There's a gigantic release on the sixth. That is massive. That was on eight six. Yeah. Yeah. So the bigger ones out there in this month already. Yeah. At eight six. Those are pretty big, but the eight, oh, this one, is from. Yeah, eight one. That's August first, and then forward. You'll see down to the bottom left of what the date is, yeah. and uh, that top left part has been very active. You know, it, yeah. it's now passed over and heading toward the backside of the sun. Well, watch this on eight. Six, I just want to show you what it looked like. Eight six. Watch this. Here it goes. A massive release right there. That was on. So eight, when six, I told you, seven. yeah. And so uh, when I was telling you this, like, you know, five or six times uh, bigger than the biggest one you saw on that other uh, graphic. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. Wow. Um, okay. Now, uh, there's one other link that you need to, it, it's only single images, but you need to go to this every day to uh, look at the magnetic field constrictor here. I'm just sending this in the uh, email over to standby one. Uh, okay. Hang on, he's going to send you an email, Brock. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, I don't have time to do anything fancy, so it's coming. Okay, and uh, this will take you to a site called The Sun in Time, which is uh, as of today, but it's got a calendar that lets you back up. And uh, I, 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 that's what I want to do is I want to back up about uh, 12 days once we get there. Uh, let me just see if you gotten there yet. Almost. We're almost right. there. Okay, we're there. Okay. Now, we you'll see All right, you, uh, you'll see a, a gold one there, about the third one over. Uh, go down and select 193 under that gold uh, picture. And that'll that give gold. us... Yeah, select 193 just under that gold picture. Got it. All right, now just move your arrow up to PFSS. Okay. There it is. Coming up now. Wow. Yeah. Now, okay. That's what we're looking at, Stan. What are we looking at? Um, you're looking at the magnetic fields as of today on the sun. And so, what I want you to do is cut, close that image. You can go back to that, uh, to the uh, 193. You have to stay on the 193 or you'll get that purple when you don't get as good a contrast. Go to the 193. But now, then go up to the calendar up at the top and drop down the calendar and go back to the, uh, the 1st of August. Okay, August 1st. Yeah, and then uh, once you've done that, go to 193 and move straight up to the PFSS, and that'll yeah. show us the magnetic field at that time, and, and you're going to see something different. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. That, that's what I'm telling you about. I mean, this that was, what, um, 10, 11 days ago, and the magnetic field is jumping across the equator, making that, that the equatorial region tight on that side yeah. and throwing it. And that lower right part where you see the kind of dark part where all the lines are coming out, you know, yep. the coronal hole. This That's is a very, hole. yeah, it, this is very, very busy. And a, a hole will put out a uh, solar wind, you know, charge particles toward us, whether it's a, you know, it doesn't have to be a CME or, you know, flare. It'll put out a huge boost to the solar wind, which plays heck with our satellite communications and with our shortwave and some other uh, frequencies of communicate in. So this, these are, these are things that you can check on yourself. Uh, yep you know, daily or whenever you feel like it, but that tells you what's coming and you can make the announcement to your listeners. Look, this is what we're seeing here. It doesn't look good. And you know, maybe that's give me a, a call. Very good like cool. So Brock, you want to hang on to those links? Yeah, I think that's all we need to see on that. Um, and uh, uh, there's, do you ever go to spaceweather.com? Yes. Go there, Brock. Do you guys ever go to spaceweather.com? Yes, we do. We'll go there okay. right now. Yep. I day. go there. I usually check that one every day. Okay. Well, I do too. And so does Holly. It's um, it tells us when we've got a really big storm now, coming. Now get the speed. The solar wind speed right now is at five hundred and fifty point one kilometers per second. That's quite high. Oh, I've seen it at uh, you know twelve hundred, fourteen hundred. It uh, yeah, it can get pretty nasty. Uh, let me see if Ace has a uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that doesn't show us there on Ace. Let's go to Discover. 
Yeah, that's got more on Discover, but that's probably hard for you to read. Um, there is one of these uh, settings here somewhere uh, that allows you to look at uh, an overhead view of the sun, and it shows the solar wind spiraling out, you know, and passing you know, past the Earth and Mars and that kind of stuff. That yeah, I don't, I don't remember which one that is, but that is a better graphic to show you when we're going to go into a solar wind <clears throat> stream that's coming out. Some you know it'll be coming out of those uh, dark spots on the sun. That's a Corona holes right there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I look. Things are things are not happy on the sun, in my opinion, and opinion of a lot of people. And I've said this many times. I'll say it again. If you were in charge of this information, as say the government, okay, and and uh, you knew that this was going to happen and it's going to get worse and it's going to throw off an outer shell of junk off of the sun and. and spread it out through the solar system and possibly the light will increase seven times if you burst and fry you know part of the planet's surface if you knew that was a possibility would you say anything to the people well you would want to but if you told them then you create a panic right i mean so absolutely absolutely so what do you do yeah you let it leak out through unofficial sources like you and me and we can have our opinion <clears throat> based on what you know they let us see and then if it gets out of hand, they'll say, oh, these guys are nuts. They're not professional. And they can right. easily it throw that at us at any time. Yeah. And, and so we do the same thing. And so, you know, it, you get the data and use your own eyes and your mind and see what's happening and trust yourself and then start preparing, you know, like for the EMP shield. I mean, yep. you've got to have power, you know, uh, you got to have water and you got to have food. So look yep. at those three things and start preparing if you haven't already. Fact, let's do this. Brock, let's play uh, uh, that. Uh, his uh, clip, if you would, so that people can understand why you need these EMP shields and what it is you're getting. If you go to EMPShield.com and uh, here's a. Uh, hey, everybody. Clip. I'm Andrew from EMP Shield. And today I'm excited to show you our new technology, the world's first whole home EMP protection device. With over 37 models that can be used around the world, our family of EMP protection devices installs easily in minutes. Being employed this year by federal organizations and electrical companies, the EMP Shield has been tested at Keystone Compliance, a federally approved DOD testing facility also serving as one of the world's fastest whole home surge protection devices working in less than one nanosecond the emp shield will protect against electromagnetic pulses coronal mass ejections lightning and all forms of power surges proven to withstand more than 40 emp strikes with zero degradation the emp shield is also one of the world's strongest surge protectors capable of withstanding over a hundred thousand amps so thank you so much for watching Please be sure to like our video and post any comments you have down below. We're sure you guys are going to have quite a few questions, so our engineers are going to be on standby to answer any questions you may have. Most importantly, be sure to share our video, as we're sure your friends are also going to be interested in our new technology. Help us get an EMP shield into every house in America. Thanks again for watching. Bye. Now. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. That um, that shield uh, that they're talking about there is for the home, but we make them for the power grid, for cities, power supplies. We've tested it in Texas, your city. We've already run the test to protect the whole power uh, generator for that city. Wow. Uh, so, and we're looking, well, not looking, we've already made the things and filing patents on things to um, make explosive breakaway EMP shields that protect the grid line going into bases and to power cities, you know, in, into the cities to totally so disconnect them at 60,000 volts coming down the line or the, the pulses that are, are frying it. Um, and look, I can't, I can't exactly tell you who or what for obvious reasons, but uh, let's say that we have 98 nuclear reactors that need to be protected and uh defense department has a lot of places and the government has a lot of three letter agencies that need to be protected we're talking to all of them now if wow. they're doing if they're doing this you guys ought to do it for your homes that's i mean so, that's so your company which you've got a lot of patents now your company has now got s several of these government contracts to help protect not only power grids 
uh, and substations and uh, uh, electrical areas for whole states and cities, but you're actually even helping protect the nuclear uh, locations from solar, from these EMP, from these solar flares and different, or anyway. And, 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 and also from, from, nuclear, from, nuclear, from nuclear attack. From nuclear uh, attacks. Now, China and Russia and Iran, they're joining them together. Um, they're going to attack us. Uh, the Hopi Indians prophecy keepers told Holly that uh, and I that yeah. face to face. And uh, so that's coming. But before that happens, or just as it's happening, we're going to have a multifaceted civil war in the country. They're going to declare martial law from whoever's in charge of the government at that time. And we will be so weakened that we will not be able to stop the land and missile attacks that the Chinese and the Russians and the Iranians will uh, send on us. And, and a lot of those will be EMP bomb type things. Um, so we, <laughs> we need to protect ourselves. So I just put a, a in my home here, I have a, uh, a, I can't think right now. I'm a little tired. Uh, a, uh, alternative electricity. So when, wait, what am I trying? A generator. I just yeah. put a brand new generator system in here, uh, which can take care of the whole complex here, the whole home. Uh, but without EMP shield on it, it's not protected. Is that right? That's right. So, That's and my cars are not protected. All of my appliances in my home are not protected. So even if the power grid was to fry out here and I have a backup generator system that would take care of me, unless I protect it, it'll be fried also. It could easily go down as well. Uh, yes, exactly. And, and the other thing you got to think about is that when you're tied to the grid of your house at your breaker box, when you have a solar EMP pulse, which is worse than a, a nuclear one by a million times, when that happens, it will send 60,000 volts of fire, you know, high voltage right down into your breaker box. And if you don't have a way to, you know, like our device does, short that out and send it down into your ground rod under your house, down into the earth. Yeah. If you don't do that, you can expect a fire to break out in your wall and then your wiring and it'll burn your house down. So, so do you see what I'm saying? Do you think that's what happened a lot, uh, uh, that that is happening a lot? I mean, all the time I see houses like they just – they either explode, there's explosions, or there's fires that just, and uh, is that happening because of solar CMEs from the sun and the more active the sun gets? Well, it's probably more likely due to the uh, remote uh, pressure controllers for gas distribution, natural gas. Those things, if they get hit, uh, you know, with EMP or with uh, right. interference from the sun in some manner, and, and they're not functioning, then they will allow the pressure to run wild into certain areas where the the, the pipelines go and they, they'll go into the home and explode number one, number two, number three. You'll have 10 or 12 homes in a link like that. They blow up and catch fire from, uh, you know, from uh, the controller yeah. not working properly. Here's, here's what happened today. I think this happened yesterday. A home in Evansville, Indiana just exploded beyond comprehension and it killed three people that were in the home, but it damaged 39 homes in the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, I don't know what that was. I mean, I don't either. They're, they're saying that something caused, uh, they're saying that gas explosion, but they're saying that something triggered the gas explosion. Ah, well, it, so, it, it, these devices that control that pressure are called SCADA, or, or, you know, SCADA devices, S-C-A-T-A. And uh, we've looked at uh, how to pr yeah, protect those from EMP interference as well. And just last week, we had a, a guy that's got one of our EMP shields on his home. And he took a direct, huge lightning strike and it blew our thing apart, melted it, but it saved the house because it sent it, when it melted, it sent it all down to the ground. And wow. that's what, what we're, we're trying to tell you that when, when we lose control of the scatter devices, which control electric uh, grids and control water, they control gas. Uh, pressures all over the place are going to go and you should have a wrench handy to be able to go out and turn your gas pipe. you know if you're yeah. a natural gas turn it off as soon as as you know that there's a, a problem with emps or interference with the scatter devices you won't always know that but that's that's a way to stop that gas going into your house and blowing you up when everybody else goes right um, you can shut off the gas feed into you and at least protect your home yeah Let's then you go got the problem Problem Let's restart. go to the, uh, to the uh, EMP website and show the products 
And and Stan, if people want to order, I know there's a certain promo code for me. I don't know what it is. I, I, I think I it's just Begley, isn't it? It's Begley? Okay. So if you go to empshield.com and use the promo code Begley, you, you get to save uh, quite a bit of money on any of these products you buy. So let's show him some of these, Brock, uh, down, down the line here. Uh, home protection. Let's look at that one. Then we'll look at vehicle. So you see it right there, Stan. Tell, this is It's pretty easy to do, isn't it? I mean, real easy. Yeah. Oh, the vehicle one. So you just take a screwdriver and get out there and and, and uh, screw it in. Uh, three three little wires got to be connected, and it tells you in the diagram how to do yeah. it. Uh, if you pull down that thing down to vehicles, or installations, actually go to installations. Okay, installation. Here we go. And if you go to installations, vehicle yep. install. There's a there's a video and there's a, a printed thing that comes with it that you. Let's, uh, let's play that one. Okay. All right. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew from EMP Shield, and today Patrick and I are going to be installing our device into a vehicle from the Coffee County Sheriff's Department. Thanks for watching. The first step to installing the EMP Shield is to find a spot inside your engine compartment that you will place the device. The shield comes with industrial strength hook and loop fasteners, so you will need to clean that area thoroughly. Place the EMP shield in the clean location and press and hold the shield in place. Be sure to place the EMP shield in a location where you'll be able to see the green light. After measuring how much cable you will need to reach the positive terminal on the battery, wrap any excess cable and use small zip ties to keep the excess wire secured. Next, loosen and remove the nut from the positive terminal as this is where the red wire will connect. Often, a battery will show red or a plus sign to indicate where the positive terminal is. Place the connector of the red wire on the positive terminal and tighten the nut to keep the wires in place. This is how it should look if you've properly installed the positive wire. Next, we will install the ground wire, which is the green wire. Install this wire to any piece of metal inside the engine compartment that attaches to the chassis of the vehicle. This wire installs in a similar fashion to the positive wire as you'll loosen a nut Place the wire in the correct location and then tighten the nut securely. The last step of this installation is to install the negative wire, which is the black wire. This wire will go on the negative side of the battery, which often has the minus sign as its symbol. To install this wire will be very similar to the positive wire. You'll loosen the nut, place the connector down, and then tighten the nut firmly. This is how this police vehicle's final installation looks with the positive, negative, and ground wire. If everything's been installed correctly, you'll be able to see the green light on the device, which means that the device is actively protecting your vehicle. To learn more about our EMP protection devices for your home, vehicle, solar system, generator, and ham radio systems, ask us any questions you may have, read about EMP protection in our EMP library, to check out articles about EMP protection, or to just read the reviews that other people have written about our devices, go to empshield.com. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. That's very, very well done. Very self-explanatory and very, uh, very easy to do. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So uh, the, the one for the home is a little bit more uh, involved. Uh, a little more involved. Yeah. yeah. We suggest you get an electrician or somebody that knows yeah, how yeah. to deal with household electricity. So, folks, you can uh, go to EMP Shield. If you don't have a home installment one, you can get one so that you can protect your entire home from massive lightning strikes. Uh, look the th look at the lightning lately, Stan. I mean, just, just last week, lightning strike hit over near Fort Gordon in Georgia, killing one of our soldiers and injuring nine others uh, two days ago. Uh, we hear of more lightning strikes, uh, killing about uh, 20 different horses. Uh, sometimes you, see, you hear of large amount of cattle that just from electric, uh, electricity. Matter of fact, the White House, just outside the White House, a thunderbolt. You might have seen that picture, folks. I, I did a video on it. That thunderbolt came down and killed three people and critically wounded another just outside the White House. Yeah. They were that, in a park, park across yeah. the street. So we know these thunderbolts are brutal. Uh, and I know people have lightning rods stand on their houses sometimes, but your your uh, surge protector 
and it, it's it's the most high powered surge protector there is. It's an yeah. EMP protector, but it's also for lightning as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. We insure them. I mean, uh, if you lose one due to lightning strike and it saves your house and everything, we'll send it back to us and we'll replace it. I think there's a fifty dollar service charge or something, but you know. Uh, it, it might even be for just postage only. I can't remember what we're doing on those, but we've replaced several of them that have been hit by lightning. So, folks, again, go to EMPShield.com. Use the use the promo code Begley and save about fifty dollars, or I don't know what the number amount is. Maybe it's a percentage. No, it's fifty dollars per unit, whatever kind you get. Whether you get for house unit, whether you get for car. Yeah. If you got more than one car, you probably need a couple for those, and uh, and and. Let's get protected because the sun is getting volatile and the and the world is getting volatile. They could use the, you know, North Korea is always talking about doing an EMP explosion over top of our head. And that would fry everything. And so we need to be protected. It, even if the power grid goes out and they can get it back up, your appliances all be dead. That's so right. you want to make sure you've protected them so that when power does get back up, you're still on. One thing I, I might add here, just a suggestion for people that have got neighbors and stuff that uh, if you have a solar power or generator, or whatever, if you want to be friendly with your neighbors when they're in strife because they have no power, you might think about getting about 300 to 400 feet of extension cords to share some of your power with them part of the day, you know, and be a good neighbor yeah. and not have a conflict. Just a thought. Right. It's a good thought. Great thought so that you can help them out in a very serious time of crisis. Yeah. And as you start talking about conflict, war conflict within our own country, or attack by these other nations that hate us, or the sun, which is becoming so volatile, frying, uh, really hitting us hard with a Carrington. I'm, I'm expecting someday that uh, we'll have a Carrington event again. And we're a lot more complex society than we were back when that happened. You so know, I've help. often wondered, uh, Paul, about uh, the Bible talking about uh, uh, blood up to a bridle, depth of a horse over at Armageddon when that happens. I thought, well, why are they talking about horses? Maybe they didn't. Of course, they didn't know about cars and tanks. But suppose that one of these massive BMP event happens, fries a lot of electronics in our Jeeps and tanks and planes and stuff. So what do you use? Horses and carriages. Horses again. It's strange. It sends it? back 150 years. Yeah, it can set us back 150 years. And the Chinese, of course, have got lots of horses and yeah. uh, they're preparing for it. Yeah. Um, the, the In the Bible, also in the book of Revelation, it does mention about a time when the light and, um, and in, the, in the Old Testament as well, in the prophets there, that the light of the sun will be seven times as bright as. Now, it, in Revelation, it talks about the sun, the heat of it becoming so hot that it boils the sea and it kills a third of the planets. Yep. If you look at the earth, the portion of the earth that's in direct lines with radiation from the sun, it's about a third of the surface area. And it says a third of the planet will be burned to a crisp. And that's going to happen like that. Yes. And that and is that's... in the book of revelation. It, yeah. it tells you, uh, so that, that and something has to cause that. Yeah. Okay. The sun has to become so, volatile and jesus said in in the whether it's in you know matthew 24 especially in luke 21 and, and it ties right into revelation that these events are going to happen in the end times along with all the rest of the nations in distress and uh and the moral fiber of the world falling completely apart all these things are simultaneous i don't know if there's a plan you know I, I always talk a lot we, we mentioned planet x or some binary system that's causing the sun to become volatile there's a lot of ancient prophecies as well as historical da data by some of the hope, uh, the uh, Mayans or the Peruvians and some of them. I don't know if that's what's about to happen again. If it is or whatever it is, the sun is being affected by something. Uh, it is. And remember in the Old Testament, I can't uh, whether I think it was uh, Isaiah or Ezekiel. They were talking about a cloud forms around the sun. Now, for yes. that to happen, it's throwing off debris from the surface of the sun and then, boom, that explosion. Right. We've right. seen it. We've seen it happen. Uh, watched it over a nine month period over in the Monoceros cluster, a star cluster, where one of the stars did that. And it went like that. And over a period of about uh, uh, eight months, it shot this cloud out through their entire stellar system past all of its planets. So it does happen. 
It, it so it can, it can darken the stars. And there's a scripture in Revelation. Yes. A third yes. of the stars were darkened. A right. third of the sun was darkened. A third of the moon was darkened. That's yeah. because of some type of explosive, uh, some star somewhere exploding is what you're saying. This is very important, the sun. I mean, it's a driver for all these kind of things. So it, yeah. it's extremely important that people are aware of that. Stan, this has been really, really good. I, I know I have another appointment. They're over here waiting on me. So yeah. it's been, this has really, really been good, folks. Again, go to empshield.com. Go right now to, there. Use the promo code Begley and get get on the, or pick up the phone. Brock, we got a phone number, too, for them. They can call. They may want to talk to somebody. Stan, they can order that way, can't they? There it is. Yeah. Phone number 620-412-9978. That's 620-412-9978. You can call and talk to someone there that can help walk you through it and to be able to place an order if you want to do it that way. You want to have a better understanding of it. Or just go to his website, empshield.com, and go ahead and order. And there's videos that help you, show you how to install it on your vehicles, as we played, or get an electrician to install it in your house. They'll watch the video so they make sure they're doing it right, and then they'll they'll do it. All right. Sam, appreciate you coming on. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get because of things the way things are shaping up here in Revelation. I'm gonna try to bring you on every month so that we can continue to show people what's happening. And uh, thank you for teaching us also about some of these sites where we can uh, monitor this on a daily basis. And Brock, you can help us keep the people informed. All right, guys. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you, Stan, so much. Appreciate it. God you bless bet. you. Bet. God bless you. Folks, don't forget, I'll be back tonight. I'll be going live at about 9 p.m. Eastern. Our guest, approximately 9 p.m. Eastern, our guest will be Mike from around the world. I guarantee you tonight, we're going to be talking about the sun and the solar system and planet X and the effects and the raid and how many raids are coming uh, on America. What did that mean that happened in Mar-a-Lago and what else is about to take place? How volatile is this world getting with the Chinese, the Russians, the Iranians and the Americans. I mean, we need to discuss it. Can Mike give us some inside intel? We're going to find out. I'll see you guys in about two hours. I'll see you at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on the coming apocalypse with Mike from around the world. Thank you, Brock, for doing a great job and navigating your way through all this. Awesome. I want to thank all my partners for standing with me, for helping us in the mission of leading people to Jesus Christ, for winning souls into the kingdom. Our live broadcast online, we're seeing 25, 30 souls every day accepting Christ as their Savior. And right here on this television broadcast, so many have come to Jesus Christ. We couldn't do it without you, but we can do all things with Christ. So thank you again for being our partners. God bless all of you.